Eric had only one goal, to find out the cause of his mother's death. The only way to do that was to dig up her two-day-old grave. However, when he lifted the lid, what he found will terrify you. That fateful evening, Eric was out of sorts. He could barely think straight, and it was a Herculean task for him to get himself in order. He gave three rapid knocks on the mortician's door, and without waiting for a response, he pushed the door open. With a shovel in hand, he walked into the office and saw an old man sitting leisurely at the desk. The old man, Andy, was the caretaker of the cemetery. Eric demanded to be taken to his mother's grave. His mother, Rachel, had been buried two days ago at the cemetery, and Eric needed to be shown the way. Eric gave his mother's full name, and Andy agreed to take him to the grave. He could easily recall where the grave was, because he oversaw the digging personally. When they got to the grave, Eric wiped the tears from his eyes and raised the shovel to start digging. However, Andy immediately stopped him. It was illegal to exhume a body without proper authorization. He demanded to know why Eric would want to desecrate his mother's grave. Eric insisted on digging, and after a while, Andy saw there was no stopping him. After all, he was younger and had more strength. The only way to stop him would be to involve the authorities. Andy immediately hurried off to his office so he could get his phone. Eric continued digging. It was evening already, so the sun was no longer fierce, allowing him to be able to work faster. Also, the grave was freshly dug, so the earth was still soft and allowed for easy digging. As the shovel struck, soft earth over and over again. He was fuming deep inside him. He began recalling how the last few hours had been a blur to him. Eric studied in a college far away from home, and he had to drop everything, including an exam when he heard his mother was dead. And not just dead, but buried. He got the tragic call from his father a few hours ago. His father had only called him two days after the burial had been completed. Eric was furious about this. He couldn't understand why his father would keep such news from him until the very end. As a result, he never got to say his goodbyes to his mom. Tears filled his eyes and blurred his vision, but he didn't stop until his shovel struck the hard coffin. He immediately threw the shovel away and was about to open it up when suddenly the blaring of sirens filled up the air. Two police officers hurried toward him and before he could do anything, he was wrestled to the ground and his hands were cuffed behind him. Andy emerged behind him, phone in hand, and his gaze apologetic as he faced Eric. He felt like he had no choice but to report the situation. Exhuming a body without proper authorization was a serious offense and he had a duty as a caretaker to report it. That being said, he couldn't help feeling sorry for the young man who was visibly very affected by his mother's death. The officers began to question Eric, demanding to know why he would desecrate his mother's grave. Eric fell to his knees and broke down in front of them as tears fell out of his eyes. He confessed that he was finding it difficult to believe that his mother had a fatal heart attack. There had never been a sign of it. The mother was a healthy woman. She was also resilient and never let any difficulties overwhelm her. Eric found her death suspicious. She had died suddenly, and within a day, she had been buried. All this proved to him that there was something fishy going on, and he was not going to stop until he got to the bottom of the matter. However, while the cops understood he was mourning his mother, they couldn't allow him to vandalize a grave just like that. If he suspected anything fishy about his mother's death, he had a duty to report it so appropriate action could be taken. Eric begged them to allow him to at least open the coffin, even if it was to just look at his mother's face one last time. The police officers were touched by his pleas, but they were still hesitant. They didn't want to break the law. The grave had already been dug, and all that was left was to lift the lid. So Eric figured if he kept pegging, they might let him see his mom. Well, luck was on his side. The cops eventually agreed to let him take one final look at his mom. They uncuffed him and he staggered toward the grave. Carefully, he jumped into the hole. The policeman stood close while Andy was also there at the edge of the grave. A somber look on his face. He gently took hold of the lid and pushed it open. There was a soft hiss as trapped air escaped. The stale air hit his nostrils as he opened the coffin all the way. With a heavy heart, he gazed upon his mother's face. She looked so peaceful, even in death, and it broke his heart. Overwhelmed by emotion, he took her hand and squeezed it. 
Then he stiffened as he got a squeeze in response. Suddenly, his mother jerked and her eyes fluttered open. Her porch lips fell open as she sucked in air. Around him, the officers and caretakers gasped in shock while Eric's eyes bulged in his sockets as he stared down at her. His mother was alive. The officers immediately radioed for an ambulance and she was taken to the hospital for immediate treatment. Eric was taken to the station to give a statement. He couldn't understand how his mother had been buried alive or how a doctor had confirmed her to be dead when that was obviously not the case. Everything happening to him was just bizarre and he could barely wrap his head around it. But the most important thing of all was that his mother was alive. The next morning, the doctor's report came in and they realized that she had never suffered the heart attack. Instead, they found large lethal doses of sedatives in her body. And if she had not been discovered at the time she was, she would have died for real. This turned the case on its head and it became an issue of attempted murder. While Eric was allowed to leave, he was warned not to say anything to anyone. So he lodged in a hotel and stayed there until the police were done with their findings. Through the toxicology report, the investigators were able to determine the exact drugs that were used on her, and after further search, they found where it had been purchased. Her husband, Doug, had bought the drugs. There was CCTV footage of him entering and leaving the pharmacy. Also, a doctor's prescription detailing how the pills should be used. This staggering fact cemented Doug as the prime suspect in Rachel's attempted murder. Further investigations revealed that two months ago, Doug had taken out life insurance on Rachel. If anything were to happen to her, he would stand to take a hefty sum of money. This proved the motive for the cops, and they immediately got a warrant. Doug was arrested that night while he was out shopping at the mall. He never even had the chance to run as he was immediately surrounded and arrested. He was immediately taken to the station and interrogated for hours. At first, he denied the allegations, but once he found out that Rachel was alive and the CCTV footage showed them buying the drugs, he broke down and pleaded for mercy. He told them that it was never his plan to kill Rachel. It only came as a last resort. His girlfriend had gotten pregnant and she had kept demanding money. He loved her so much, way more than he loved his wife, Rachel, so he could barely resist her demands. To get a huge amount of money, the woman came up with an elaborate plan to place Rachel on insurance and then kill her by poisoning her favorite drink. Doug wept profusely and begged for forgiveness. Eric felt his world crumble as he listened to his father's confessions. He couldn't believe his father would go to such great lengths just to get money to please a woman. He felt nothing but disgust as his father was eventually led away in cuffs and put behind bars. The girlfriend was arrested weeks later as he tried to flee the country. She was also sentenced to jail. Later on, Rachel was discharged from the hospital. She was grateful for another chance at life and she was proud of her son for not letting anything stop him from finding the truth. They returned home together and tried to get their lives back in order. It was the only thing they could do after such a tragic event. What a tragic story. When you or a husband could go to such great lengths just for money, how would you have handled this situation if you were in Eric's shoes? Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.